Hey everyone, welcome back. This is my review of Higurashi When They Cry, episode 13. Okay. Wow. I believe this is the final episode in the third arc of this season. <sighs> All I have to say is just... Wow. It's... Okay, first off, a major difference I noticed in this episode which is that, from the previous two arcs, which is that usually it's... In the previous two arcs, it was actually Neon who finished off uh, Keiichi, when this time around, it was actually Satoko. And even though this arc was centered around her, I did not see that coming at all. Really, Neon was not even a, really a villain in this arc. I mean, she did have her, ha have her freak out moment, of course, but she wasn't even a villain in this arc, which is another major difference, too. Okay, and that ending right there, oh my god, the f them feels so hard, oh my god. Like, I could not avert my eyes away from the fucking TV, okay, or, or from my fucking computer, okay, that's how, that's how, that's how major it was, like, with Satoko's f f major fucking freak out, it's like, it got me to care for that fucking little girl more than I already have, which is saying a lot because I already felt extremely sorry for her, but this is just ridiculous, man. It's like, she literally killed Keiichi. I mean, technically he survived and went to the hospital, but I think he's supposed to be pre presumed dead at the very end there, okay? Seriously. Oh yeah, this was such an amazing episode. The ten, like always, the tension is so fucking high. The and this episode especially, the feels are so fucking intense. This is masterful writing right here. Okay, it really is. And again, Satoko's uncle, a real douchebag. Seriously, you know what he did in this episode? He forced his knee his niece, that little girl, to get into the bathtub completely naked, run the water blazing hot, and stay in there, and count to 10,000. Where's my fucking axe? Seriously. God damn it. It's, uh... Oh, and uh, Rika died in this episode, and... Sato, and because even though Keiichi obviously didn't do it, it was actually done by crows, a bunch of black crows, we have believe, believe that, right? Um, but because Keiichi was there with an axe, Satoko blamed him for the death, and that's what basically initiated her huge fucking freak out, and initiated her pushing him off the bridge into the water where... He didn't die, but I'm pretty sure he died shortly after he went to the hospital. Okay? What can I say that ha I haven't already said? This is a fucking amazing. Seriously. This is masterful writing right here. Okay? It really is. I'm so glad that I picked up this series. If you have yet to check this episode out, do it right now. Seriously. Just do it. Okay? This is so, like beyond amazing how great that the right that the writing is in this ep in this episode in the series as a whole but especially in this episode I think this might be the best writing in the series thus far right here in this episode okay I am not kidding it's so good like the the way you can get the impression that Satoko has literally lost her mind is outstanding okay Again, like always, the only two real things I can actually complain about are the uh, art and the music, at least, for, or not the music, the music's amazing, the art and the animation, at least for this episode, okay, I mean, there wasn't any, like, boring music in this episode, because there was, were, were none of those slice of life moments, although I assume they're going to be in the next episode, because I assume next episode's going to be another reset, where we're going to start the fourth arc of this season, okay. But anyways, overall, hope you enjoyed this review, guys. See you guys. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.